afternoon. After that introduction, I'm convinced that I will send the shortest bio that we can read at a commencement or any event. I think it took longer for the president to read my bio than the speech I'm about to give. But, uh, but rest assured, I've been to enough commencements in my life to know that there's never been a short speech that was a bad speech. <laughs> there will. You believe that? Yes. Members of the Board of Regent, I think uh, the chair is here, President Peter Foss, faculty, staff, alumni, graduates of the class of 2013, parents, relatives, spouses, and friends of the graduates and guests, another good afternoon. You know, I am honored and pleased to be here for this special commencement. You have just recognized these ladies and two gentlemen who were part of the first class that you know as African Americans. And I'm pleased to say that too often institutions forget to acknowledge and honor those who were both pioneers and trailblazers for their presence in historical institutional events. So the University of New Orleans today has gracefully fulfilled this obligation of gratitude. And for that, I commend all of you for that sensitivity and respect. Now, I'm probably one of the few uh, declining numbers of people who were around when UNO you know, was open. And I have to say that if it were not for Attorney A.P. Turo, as mentioned by your president, Thurgood Marshall, who was not at the time a Supreme Court Justice, and the former mayor of the city of New Orleans, Ernest Dutch Moriel, you know would not have opened in 1958, I assure you. But for their work and their hard work, we are here today aging each year. But I want to, I want to congratulate the faculty and staff and administration for their leadership then in 1958 and now. And I do that and ask them to continue their re resilience of this institution during those long, and I mean long decades of perv pervasive challenges. I know the challenges that you know has faced over the decades. You have been resilient and I ask you to continue to do so. I was privileged to collaborate with every you know president since its founding. And I am proud to know that we have continued that relationship. Now, the honor of being here today is not simply to reminisce about the past, although for those of you who do not remember the past, you are bound to repeat its failures. So today, I want to talk about today. I mean today and the realities of today. When you, the graduates, were working hard to secure your degrees, virtually nations the world over were mired in confrontations, political disasters, the denial of human rights to their own people, and they were giving serious threats of nuclear catastrophes elsewhere in the world. And the extraordinary electric electronic creations brought these world experience into our living rooms. We saw them when they were happening. And we then realized that we are all global citizens and that we are impacted by events around the world, directly and indirectly. Thousands of miles away, we get impacted by what is happening around the world. Now, Researchers and thoughtful people started, started assessing if the problems around the world are what they are, how are we doing in the United States on the quality of life issues and productivity? Now these are the standards that rate the quality and decent living conditions as well as the potential for countries to achieve and parents and spouses and relatives to achieve parity for themselves and their children. Where are we in the world? 
Well, when the research was done, to some great surprise, what surfaced in comparisons was that this great nation was falling behind on the global scale. And I'll give you an example. When we were number one in youngsters graduating from high schools, we have now dropped to fifth. From number one in major research in science, technology, and growth for the future, we're down to 17. I'm reminded, and those of you who read about it, when Russia put up its Sputnik, John F. Kennedy said, we're going to the moon. We're back at that stage. In comparisons internally in the United States, for every measure on the quality of life issues between those who have and those who have not, the playing field is not equal. And for educational attainment, health services, employment, economic levels, housing, the disparities between those who have and those who have not percentage-wise, percentage-wise, has not closed. In fact, we believe they are widening, and that is not a happy thought. Now let me be very clear to this audience. The statistics I've just read apply to all Americans, but they are exacerbated with regards to one's race, gender, color, or economic circumstances. If you are poor, you are at risk. If you are a minority, Hispanic or African American in particular, you are at greater risk. If you are undereducated or undereducated, you are at risk. If you suffer from debilitating disease, mental or physical, you are at risk. If you are addicted to drugs, you are at risk. And if we as citizens of this democratic nation do not address or narrow these disparities, each and every one of us is at risk. This is especially true in educational attainment. And I want to quote something that has been said so many times. Any nation that believes it can be uneducated and free is wishing for something that never was and will never be. Now why am I talking about failures and disappointing realities at a celebration of a commencement? You know, we should be all be happy and celebrate. Well, put simply, it is to remind the young and the not so young that our best hopes for achieving a more just and humane society is sitting ready to receive their degrees. They are our future. They have shown their willingness to sacrifice to achieve a university degree. They are being prepared or have been prepared to lead now and they are our future peacemakers and teachers. And yes, they must indeed celebrate today. However, they are the chosen ones and their obligations to earn a living as they wish to do and share their talents for the common good and general welfare is non-negotiable. They have risen to a level where the return on the investments that have been made for them makes their obligation to share with others non-negotiable. Their names are going to be called in this commencement in a few minutes, but their names have already been called for service to their country. And first and foremost, they must be willing to bring a greater degree of togetherness in a nation that is showing past examples of divide and conquer, as well as the propensity to blame or ignore victims of benign neglect. These graduates, I know, have shown resilience and commitments to people in need. Their value to this country, their value to this country is the rationale for today's celebration. So my message 
this afternoon is to ask them to continue to further their education to the fullest of their talents. Do not be afraid, graduates, to lead. You are the best examples to promote quality education from the cradle to the grave. And you may have the best chance to break that roadway leading from the school to incarceration facilities. I want to repeat that. You may be the best people for the future to break that roadway that's out there right now from the schoolhouse to jail. You know needs your support in the future as well, so you have two obligations. Now if these graduates don't act, who will? Leadership is the return on this investment. And to this audience, this faculty and staff, alumni and its board everywhere, we need more of these graduates, men and women of goodwill. You are special class of 2013, and it is perfectly clear to anyone who can see, walk, listen, that every, we know every day how much further we must go. The respect for life has been greatly diminished. It happens every day on our streets. And our faith, our faith is being challenged to create a more just and humane society. We are it. And I close with these questions. If it is now, not now, I ask you when. If it is not here, I ask you where. And if it's not you, I ask you who. God bless you and have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.